Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Sam and I make videos about makeup, chronic illness, and whatever I want. And today I want to talk about doing yard projects or yard maintenance when you have a chronic illness. I realize it's kind of late in the season by the time I'm filming this, but I have done my projects very in early in the spring and then I've been kind of wiped out with migraine attacks. So here we are. The first thing I want to say is plan, plan, plan. I start planning about a year in advance. So by the time I'm wrapping up my stuff in the spring, and I always plan to do my stuff as early in the season as I can before it gets too hot because me and he are not friends. But I start planning what I'm going to do the following year. Even if it's not a project, it's just, I know every year I need to weed the flower bed in front of the house. I need to uh, weed and mulch around the hydrangeas. Even if I'm not doing something new, I make sure that I have a detailed plan of everything I need to do the next year, even if it's just maintenance. I also like to keep a notebook, which I didn't break in here, I don't believe, of how much I need for every area. Like, I know that I'm going to need X amount of bags of mulch for this section and then for this section. And if I'm going to plant flowers, this is how many flowers I used here. That way, when the next year comes up or you know, we're starting the season, I have everything ready to go and I don't have to make multiple trips to a store unless of course, like everything doesn't fit in your car. But you know what I mean? I don't have to go in with a bunch of guesswork and get home and be like, oh man, I actually needed three of these. So I started this this year. This is something I learned with trial and error is to keep a running note, whether it's in your phone or a physical notebook of the things that you're going to need. Now, if you do have projects like for example I want to do a little paver walkway where we cut through the grass and we've just worn the grass out so I want to plan for that ahead of time I will get my measurements I will look and see which types of pavers I want and then when the time comes I will plan around the weather what's the coolest day what's the day that's going to have more cloud coverage less humidity, things that impact my health directly. So plan, plan, plan. That is truly like the easiest and most effective thing for yard projects and yard upkeep is planning. Something that I recommend having before you start is some kind of cart or dolly or wheelbarrow. I have a gorilla cart because a wheelbarrow, I do not have the strength to balance that in any capacity. So I got I, I'll be inserting clips and stuff here, but I got this gorilla cart as a birthday gift a couple of years ago, I believe. Not last year, I think it was the year before. So 2021, I think I got this gorilla cart. And what I really love about it that I didn't show in this little clip is you can dump it. So it has this handle and you pull and so the base stays like this and so you could fill it with loose mulch or dirt and dump it. It holds a lot of weight but it's really easy to move. It has like the um, all-terrain tires so you can roll over you know sticks, rocks, uneven ground. It works really well and rather than risk hurting your back or exerting even more energy than just pulling something don't carry stuff if you don't have to. I use this as I'm pulling weeds. I throw the weeds in it so I can just dump it into a bag. So it's really multi-use and I haul the mulch around like uh, at the store. They'll usually load the mulch for you and then I put it right into this wagon and then I drag each section to where it goes. So have multiple sections to mulch, I will load into the wagon the stuff for the front of the house, I'll load into the wagon the stuff for my vegetable garden, so on and so forth, and then just put the mulch in each spot. That way I don't have to move bags as I'm doing the project to really save time and energy. Protective clothing. They do make clothing that is actually like UV resistant and that is great. I actually have a shirt, but also just breathable coverage because sunscreen will obviously help protect you from the sun. But one of the things that really helps protect you from overheating is stopping the sun from hitting your skin in the first place. So I have a nice gardening hat with air vents that's UV safe. I have a shirt 
that does the same thing. I got these things from Duluth Trading Company. That's not the only place you could get them, but they have a great selection of clothes that are protective for the outside because the whole basis of that store is work clothes. So whether you're working in the winter or the summer, they have gardening stuff, they have like winter protection. It's stuff that is comfortable, very high quality, and it thinks of things you wouldn't even think of, you know, like the vent on the side of the hat is something that I never personally thought of. So things like that. I love that store for my outdoor clothes specifically. Uh, obviously wearing sunscreen, that's a given. Make sure I set an alarm in my phone to reapply every two hours because I take so many breaks. My projects always take more than two hours because the next one is rest a lot. Even if you don't feel tired yet, take a break. Take a 15 minute break. If you've only worked for five minutes, take a 10 minute break because the way to stop yourself from crashing is those regular breaks. And it helps you to next one, stay hydrated. We really need to make sure that we're staying hydrated more than the average person because a lot of us have pots and we become dehydrated incredibly easily. So we have to make sure we're really forcing the hydration and the electrolytes. Something else I think a lot of people don't think about is how important it is to eat a really big meal while you're working. So I eat a really large breakfast before I start. Make sure it's high in protein. Make sure it has a decent amount of carbs for energy. It'll keep you full, but it'll keep your body from going into like low blood sugar or anything like that. And the next one is eat as big of a lunch. High in protein, high in carbs, you need the energy, you need the protein. So I like to have like a big salad, one, the hydration from the lettuce, two, the protein from whatever I add, and I always make sure that it has the added carbs as well. If you can, take medication before you start. Obviously consult your doctor if you haven't already gotten approval, but I like to take a dose of ibuprofen with my breakfast to almost like pre pre-game prevent any kind of pain. I think this works really well and then I can take it again at the end when I'm doing heat and ice. Heat and ice when you're done for the day is really important. It helps with muscle pain. It helps keep everything loose and uh, from stiffening up. I find sitting to do as much of my activities as possible is the best way to do it. I sit to pull weeds, I sit to lay mulch, I sit for pretty much everything that allows me to. And it might seem silly or you don't want to do it, but I promise it saves energy, but it also just stops your body from using muscles too much and causing pain later in the day or the next day. Sitting is really important. You could get one of those little rolling outdoor things that have a seat on it. I can't do that because if I bend over, my blood pressure gets all wonky and I'm more likely to faint. So I sit on a tarp on the ground, move the tarp around. That way if it's wet or dirty, I don't have to worry about that because I'm prone to hives and that leads me to my next tip is keep baby wipes with you at all times because a lot of the stuff out there will give you contact hives and I found a great way before I can get in and really wash everything off is to like wipe myself off with baby wipes. I personally like... Um, any of the sensitive and fragrance free ones, I get them at Costco or Sam's Club. It's the best deal. And then I don't have to be itchy and scratchy the whole time I'm doing my projects. I think that's all the tips I have. Really the most important thing is take your time, lots of rest, and plan it out. You don't have to get it all done in a day. Rome was not built in a day. I think that's the saying. Just really make sure to take your time. Watch flares. Uh, or potential flare triggers. For me, the humidity with my asthma, so try to watch the humidity. If it's going to be too hot, try to do it early or later. Make sure you have bug spray. Enlist help if you can. So these are the things that help me. I also have some tips in a video from last year of like ways to survive the heat. Uh, battery operated fan. I will link that video as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have tips for yard work, 
I know tons of you had great tips for cleaning. Please leave them in the comments because I'm always looking for easier things. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and I will see you guys next time.